court is now in session for the trial of Mr. John Doe. OBJECTION! Okay, first of all, how could you have any problems when they just said the suspect's name? And also, how do you do that speech bubble thing? Like, how's that even humanly possible? Oh, sorry, I was just trying to find the pun, the suspect's name. Um, I'm sorry, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. There's no pun, the suspect's name. IMPOSSIBLE Okay, whatever. Will the prosecution just give their opening statement? Uh, yes, of course. Okay, clearly the defendant has been proven guilty. I'm going to get- HOLD IT! What now, oh my- Your Honor, the trial isn't over. I still haven't examined the witness's pet parrot yet. As the judge, I hereby fucking quit. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, the game where every client is guilty until proven innocent, every witness is a liar, and everyone falls into three categories, gay, lesbian, or evil. If there's one series I've been wanting to play for a while now, it's Ace Attorney. I love Ding and Ronpa, and I've heard that the games are very similar, so I was very eager to check this out. And now, with Ding and Ronpa coming to the Switch this December, and me wanting to play a series similar to it, uh, here we are. So, for those unaware, Ace Attorney is, uh, a point-and-click adventure visual novel courtroom drama video game series. Simple. All jokes aside, I'll explain it for real this time. In each game in the original trilogy, there are four to five cases to play. The cases are split into different days, and the main gameplay section comes out in two different sections. An investigation section and a court section. The investigation section has you traveling across different areas, talking to people, showing them evidence, finding evidence in places, and more. Whereas the court section, the most famous part, has you question witnesses, protect your defendants, and watch your enemies have concerning mental breakdowns, which is always the best part. So with that explained, I'd like to get into this reveal. This will be a three-part series, with each part covering one of the three games in the trilogy, so this review will only cover the first game. This is how the videos will work out. I'll cover each case, explain my opinions on them, and give the, each of them a rating. After I do that, I'll decide on a final rating for the game. Starting off with, well, the case that started it all, we have the first turnabout. This case stars the iconic Harry, or the Larry Butts, who has been detained for suspected murder. Defending him is his best friend, and also the main character, Phoenix Wright. So, Larry has been suspected of murdering his ex-girlfriend, Cinderblock, and it's up to you to defend him. So, surprisingly, a large amount of people dislike this case, and I honestly don't see it because it's a really good tutorial case. In my opinion, it's what a tutorial case should be. It's short, sweet, showcases his mechanics well, has fun characters, and it's... The only case without Mia. Well, kind of. Sure, it may be pretty easy and short if you don't like short cases, but at least it's better than the completely unnecessary tutorial case from game two, which I'll talk more about in, when I do the video about that game. Anyway, the real murderer ends up being about 10 feet away from you and he triggers one of the most hilarious Phoenix sprites in the game. There isn't much else to say about this case as it's only a tutorial and takes about 20 to 30 minutes to beat, except that it's a really well done tutorial case and gets you hooked. 8 out of 10. Now, here's yet another case that divided fans. I've asked a lot of people what their least favorite case from the first game is, and the response I always seem to get is this one. Why exactly? I don't know for sure, but I can think of a big reason why, which I will get to later. But about my opinions on this case, I think it's pretty good. It introduces the great reoccurring characters we all know and love, such as the super fancy Edgeworth, the super poor Gumshoe, and the, uh, super spirit medium Maya. Oh, and how could we forget Mr. Hemorrhoids over here? Oh, and remember when I was talking about Mia? Did you guys like her? Yeah, well now she's dead. So yeah, Mia's been killed in this case, and her twin sister, Maya, is locked up in prison because she's been suspected of murder. So, in this case, you have to defend her. I wouldn't say this is up there with the best cases in the game, but it's definitely good. You get to defend Maya, one of the best characters in the game, 
resulting in so much hilarious banter. Yes, it's all good, except for how Mia's death played out. This is the part that I believe made people hate the case, and I understand why. It wasn't her death itself that was badly <laughs> executed, sorry, but it was how it was handled later. Maya is a spirit medium, meaning she can channel her sister, Mia, letting her talk to you from the dead. This part bugged me for so long. It felt almost like the creators of the game were like, oops, we shouldn't have killed off Mia, let's keep bringing her back. And when I say keep bringing her back, oh, I really mean it. She comes back as a ghost in almost every single fucking case. You get used to it eventually, but I'll always hold a grudge against this case for introducing the whole thing. Oh, and don't misinterpret what I'm saying here. I do love Mia's character, but it just felt like such a stupid thing, especially when it becomes an ass pull for Phoenix to win. It's just really dumb. <sighs> However, for me, that doesn't take away from all of the greatness of this case. Apparently, though, it bugged everyone else. Uh, personally, I'd give this case uh, a 7 out of 10. Like I said, people think case 2 is the worst, which they are absolutely wrong about. Let me now introduce Turnabout Samurai. Looking back at the case now, it wasn't horrible, especially compared to some of the cases in game 2. Ah! So, in this case, the star of Maya's favorite kids show, and yes, that wasn't a mistake, I literally meant Maya's favorite kids show, because I don't know, for some reason she likes children's shows, has been accused of murdering another actor. So, what does this have to do with the plot? Absolutely fucking nothing, which is the first problem of this case. It would be one thing if you had some filler cases in later games, which, yeah, there are, and they work, but having a filler case right after the first real case of the game? Kind of a stupid move. But that wasn't the only bad thing about this case. There was so much backtracking, it got confusing, it took so long for some of the characters to grow on you, and more. I absolutely despised this case at first, but I have to say, after replaying it, I like it quite a bit more. Here's why. Now that Nah, most of the characters have grown on me. Replaying it felt really refreshing. Not to mention, there are so many awesome overlooked moments from this case, such as Edgeworth warming up to you more, as well as the love he and Maya have for Steel Samurai. Oh, and also, another huge plus of this case is that it introduces one of my favorite Ace Attorney characters of all time, Penny. Some of you viewers might be going, uh, who? And I, uh, don't blame you. See, for some reason, Capcom decided not to make this adorable nerd a reoccurring character! I won't go into full detail about it yet, but there's basically a case in the second game in which basically all of the characters are back. But Penny isn't? Why? Are you telling me we can have fucking old bitch, I mean old bag back, but not her? Why? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the case is amazing, but it's definitely not as horrible as some people say. Though, to be fair, the fact that I had to replay it to like it really says a lot. Turnabout Samurai gets a 6 out of 10. If you guys really did think Turnabout Samurai was insufferable, then this was the case that probably made it up for you. Turnabout Goodbyes is probably one of the greatest cases in Ace Attorney. Just as you start to like Edgeworth, BAM, the game completely surprises you by accusing him of murder. Of course, he isn't actually the one who did it, and you have to defend him. Also, sorry for interrupting my own video, but before I keep going, this is probably one of the most hilarious Maya sprites in the game, but why does the beginning of it, like if you pause it, why does it look so freaky and unnerving? Like, it's actually kind of terrifying. But anyways, sorry for that, back to the video. <clears throat> now, I wouldn't go as far as to say this is the best case in the series, but it's definitely up there for me. Maybe like the third or fourth best. But it's impossible not to appreciate the genius that went into this case. In case three, Edgeworth starts becoming a seemingly nicer person, which actually is another underlooked cool part of it, and you kind of start to like him as a character. See where I'm going with this? 
the game makes you want to defend him. And not only that, but this case throws you for so many left turns. I'm talking s literally solving another case within a case left turns. Honestly, I can see virtually no problem with this case, except that it could get a bit confusing sometimes. But the fact that Larry's back makes up for it. Oh, and also, if anyone in the comments says one of the problems of the case was Lada being a bad character, I'm breaking every one of y'all's kneecaps. And yeah, maybe all of that stuff is great, but the best part was probably... Yeah. There is actually no way people think this guy is straight. Case 4 gets a perfect 10 out of 10. Oh, and also, this part in the end credits of the case actually made me ship Maya and Penny for a while, and I still kinda do ship them, but I also ship Maya and Francisca, and it's a whole thing, and it's so hard for me to decide, and I know this ship probably has like no fan piece at all, but I, I don't fucking care. Well, that's all of the cases in Game 1 of Ace Attorney. Thank you all for watching. HOLD IT! Oh, you thought it was over? Ha, huh. far from it. Case 5 may be the last case in the game, but it's 7 hours and 30 minutes long. Um, according to this walkthrough at least. It probably took my dumbass double that amount of time to beat this case. Um, anyways, aside from case 4, I'd consider this to be the greatest case in the game. Phoenix Wright is back, and this time he has to defend Mia, or sorry I meant Lana, alongside his new temporary assistant, Maya, or Emma. So here's the thing, Maya is temporarily gone because she, uh, went to go eat burgers or something. I don't know, her burger trips probably last like a month or something. Anyways, it takes some getting used to, but Emma's a great character. Just like the last case, this game has so many awesome twists. Blackmail, unsolved cases, secrets, framing, and even more. It's almost the perfect case. I mean, come on, it even has really cool 3D puzzles. But there are some problems. First of all, it is so long. Like, I do enjoy the long cases, but this is the longest one, and on the last trial, I just kind of felt like, can we please finish this already? And second of all, here's the thing. The Ace Attorney series originally came out for the Game Boy in Japan, and this case didn't exist yet. It came into existence and the game was ported to the DS, hence the 3D stuff. Meaning, since this case came out after the trilogy had already been completed, this meant we would never see any of these characters again, and same with the 3D puzzles. This was kind of sad, since I loved basically all of the characters introduced, except you, as well as all of the 3D puzzles, except you, oh my god. It was even worse when the case coming after this, the first case of game 2, was really bad. But luckily, these are the only bad things about the case. Case 5, the fifth and final case of the original Ace Attorney, gets a 9 out of 10. So, now I've discussed all I want to about the singular cases, but what about the game in terms of writing, characters, art, and music? Starting off with the writing, I cannot express how much I love it. It's a perfect blend of seriousness and comedy. In one part, you could be laughing because of a character's hilarious antics, and in the next, you could be on the edge of your seat because of all the suspense and drama. It may seem like a basic compliment to give a writing style, but it's seriously really hard to do that. Not to mention, Ace Attorney has such a fun and unique style of comedy, and I never get tired of it. But, a story-driven game can't be good without awesome characters, and Ace Attorney is just that. N no, seriously, there are too many characters to count. I'm not even joking. Anyways, in the first Ace Attorney game, I loved basically every character, except for the ones you're meant to hate. But I think, and this is just my opinion, that the characters aren't complete without their fun animations. Which brings me right to my next topic, the art in the game. Now, I played the three games through the Switch trilogy version, meaning I had updated graphics. These ones, luckily, are great. Even the original DS port graphics hold up well, which is a huge plus. <laughs> I don't even want to know what the original Game Boy graphics looked like. Now, one problem with the graphics in this game is that the art style bugged me a bit at first. Don't worry, it grows on you shortly, 
but I don't know, I was just kind of weirded out by the lack of bold outlines on the drawings. <laughs> I guess it's just different from my art style, I guess. But the resolution and art style or whatever aren't even the most important components here. What is most important are the hilariously stupid animations. Like I had been saying earlier, these animations help further express what type of character you're dealing with, but also they keep you entertained while you're reading the text and even help make moments funnier. Alongside the hilarious writing style, of course. And finally, the last component I would like to look at is the music. Okay, real talk. This might be one of the best OSTs in video game history. I don't think any one of the songs here ever got old for me, and almost each one was so memorable. I didn't think it was possible for such a simply made soundtrack to, rav to rival those of AAA games, but well, here we are. So now I've said basically all I wanted to about the game, and I gave each of them a rating out of 10, so now it's time for the final rating. I'd give Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, the first game in the Ace Attorney series, an 8 or 9 out of 10. It's kind of hard to decide, uh, since, you know, some of the cases are really great, and some of them do tend to have poor moments, especially since this is Shu Takumi's first Ace Attorney game, and he's struggling with his writing style, but I thought it was really good. A lot of the cases, like I said, definitely do not deserve as much hate as they get. And yeah, I think that's about it. Time to wrap up this, I was about to say short, but it was probably really long, wasn't it? Uh, anyways, time to wrap up this long video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching, and for just sticking around with the channel in general. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day, bye. Hey everyone, once again thank you so much for watching and I hope you're looking forward to the new video that will come out next month. And just a heads up, that video will be a part 2 of the update video that I did a few months ago. Uh, and also, here's a reminder, all of the gameplay clips and music used do not belong to me. All of the uh, gameplay clips used belong to a YouTuber named Lacry or Lakery or something. So go check out their channel with the link in the description below. Uh, they're a very good gameplay channel, help my dumbass through the cases that I couldn't figure out. Uh, yeah. So once again, thanks for watching. Secret scene coming up. Take this music and this puzzle much longer. Ah!